everyone, welcome to this video. Today, I would like to take a look at two integrals that I found somewhere on the internet. So, first we have the improper integral from 0 to infinity of the square root of x e to the minus x with respect to x. And we have the integral from 1 to the square root of 3 of the inverse tangent of 1 over x with respect to x. So, I would like to start with the first integral because it's the first integral and we start with the first things. So, we will use integration by parts to begin with. So, di plus minus, so we will differentiate the square root of x and integrate e to the minus x. So, differentiate the square root of x, you get 1 over 2 square root of x, and integrate e to the minus x, you get negative e to the minus x. So, again, the arrow and the uh, whatever this is called. So, we have negative root x e to the minus x evaluated at 0 and in infinity since, since those are our bounds minus the integral from 0 to infinity of well it's a plus here because we have minus minus e to the minus x over 2 square root of x dx so well so we will we'll evaluate this thing right here so plug in 0 we get simply 0 and if we plug in infinity, well, this term is going to go to infinity, but this term is going to go to zero. And since we know that exponentials are faster than square roots, we get that this whole thing is equal to zero. So we are only left with this integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x over two square root of x dx. So we will introduce a substitution here. So let u equal to square root of x, which means that our du will be 1 over 2 square root of x dx. So, let, so let's see. We have okay, the integral from, from okay, the square root of 0 is 0, square root of infinity is still infinity. And then this is our dx, so, we, so it will vanish. And then... Our x right here, since, since u is the square root of x, x is nothing but u squared, so we'll have e to the negative u squared du. Let me just rewrite this infinity a little bit. Okay, so now this should be familiar to you. So, let's see. We know that the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the minus x squared dx is equal to the square root of pi. This is the Gaussian integral, and a lot of people are familiar with this. But we know, but we can see that e to the minus x squared is an even function because plug in minus x, we get e to the minus minus x squared, which is e to the minus x squared. So we have an even function over a symmetric integral, which means this is equal to two times the integral from zero to, in this case, infinity of e to the minus x squared dx. But then this integral is exactly the integral we have right here. So let's see, if twice this integral is the square root of pi, this integral is only going to be equal to the square root of pi over two. Okay, that's a nice answer. And then the second integral. So we'll start by introducing a substitution. So we'll let u equal to the inverse tangent of 1 over x and our du will be okay the derivative of the inverse tangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared plug in, using the chain rule we get negative 1 over x squared over 1 plus 1 over x squared dx so this is not present anywhere in our integrand so what we will do is we will multiply both sides by this thing so that this thing vanishes and it's just dx. So we will have that dx is equal to 1 plus 1 over x squared over negative 1 over x squared du. But why is 1 over x squared? So we so taking the arc tangent of uh, the tangent on both sides, I'm sorry, we get 1 over x equals to the tangent of u. Square on both sides, we get 1 over x squared equals tangent square of u. So, let's see, we have 1 plus tangent square, which is secant squared of u, over 
minus v tangent square root three. D. And then we can simplify this bit because if the secant squared is one over cosine squared, tangent squared is uh, is sine squared over cosine squared, but since it's the it's in the denominator, we will take the reciprocal, so cosine squared over sine squared. The cosine squared will cancel out, leaving us with one over sine squared, which is okay. So negative cosecant squared of u du. So let's plug everything in. We have, okay, the, the inverse tangent of 1 over 1 is pi over 4. The inverse tangent of 1 over 3 is pi over 6. And then we have our u and the negative cosecant squared of u du. But then we have a minus and we have a, we have a minus. So this means we can interchange our two bounds of integration, which is what we will do. So, integral from pi over 6 to pi over 4 of u cosecant squared of u du. And don't worry, there are some descriptions outside. I, I hope you can hear them. So, we'll use integration by parts. So, di plus minus. We'll differentiate u because differentiating u is simple, it's just 1. And we will integrate cosecant squared of u. And this is just negative cotangent of u. And by the way, when I first figured out this integral, I wasted a lot of time by <laughs> integrating cosecant squared of u when it was just the derivative of cotangent of u, well, the opposite of the derivative of cotangent of u. So, yeah, okay, so we'll have and the arrow and the thing, we get negative u cotangent of u evaluated at pi over 6 and pi over 4 minus the integral from pi over 6 to pi over 4 of, we'll have minus minus, so it's going to be positive, so cotangent of u du. So what? I'm just erase those substitution in this uh, di thing because we don't need it anymore. So, mm. this nicely. Well, I give it. Okay, so this bit right here. If we evaluate this, so we will have negative pi over 4, and the cotangent of pi over 4 is just 1, so times 1, and then minus minus is plus, so pi over 6 times cotangent of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 the square root of 3 and then we can we can combine the two fractions on the same, the same denominator so let's see we get times 2 here times 2 here times 3 here times 3 here so we get 2 pi root 3 minus 3 pi over 12 okay so now this integral right here, how can we solve this? Well, we can multiply and then divide by cosecant of u because it's not going to change anything except it's going to make our job easier. So we have the integral from pi over 6 to pi over 4 of cotangent u cosecant u over cosecant u du. Okay. So now we can introduce a substitution, namely, let t equal cosecant u, which means that dt will be cosecant u, cotangent u, well, minus that du. But for the minus, we can take the care of this by doing minus minus because it's going to become positive. So I'm just extend this frame right here. So we'll have, okay, cosecant of pi over 4 is square root of 2, cosecant of pi over 6 is 2, so we'll get this is our, this is our dt, and we have 1, one, over, not d, one, one over t, dt, and again, we can interchange those two bonds of integration because we have a minus here, so integral of, from square root of 2 to 2 of, 1 over t dt. 
but this is equal to the uh, the natural log of well we, we won't put the absolute value bars here because the natural log function is positive is positive over that interval so natural log of t evaluated at square root of 2 and 2 we'll extend this frame yet again so this is equal to okay natural log of 2 minus okay natural log of the square root of 2 square root of 2 is just 2 to the 1 half and you can use log properties to bring that one half to the outside, so one half ln two, which is equal to one half ln two, and then we'll put everything on the same denominator as this, which is which is a denominator of twelve, so six ln two over twelve. So let us now combine this uh, and these two. So we'll have this plus this, so it's going to be 2 pi root 3 minus 3 pi. Wait, no, wait, let me just erase. Let me just erase some things to make more space. So, wait. So, like this. Answer is two pi root three minus three pi plus our six ln two all over twelve. And this is our answer. So this is the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe like all the other YouTubers asked you to do. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.